AEW. Also announced December 27th, the Dynamite and Rampage taping will take place at the Addition Financial Arena in Orlando, Florida. This is where the company held Full Gear 2022 and the October 23rd, 2021 Dynamite. It is located on the campus of the University of Central Florida. So they've added those shows. As I mentioned, you could fill a lot of those shows with MJF title defenses. They will be on collision uh, tomorrow night or on Saturday night. If you happen to miss the AEW Dynamite show last night, they did have another crossing of paths between MJF and Kenny Omega, and they did announce that they will be facing off for the title on Collision. Omega's record world title reign of 346 days is currently in peril. MJF is, has held the title for 341. So that and then Hikaru Shida's title match are the only two things that are currently announced for a collision. Now, last night, they kicked off the show from the LaCora Center in Philadelphia. The Dynamite Diamond Ring up for grabs between Juice Robinson and MJF. They did have a skit at the beginning of the show where MJF was cutting a promo, and then Adam Cole calls him, and then we hear the words, Adam! And of course, it's Roddy Strong time. He rolls into the shot alongside Mike Bennett and Matt Taven. As he mentioned in his in his promo last week on the videotape promo, maybe it was time for Roderick Strong, maybe it was time for him and his homies to come around to MJF because if they're going to help their friend Adam, they're going to have to help their friend MJF or whatever it is. Look, I'm just happy that the skits are over. That was really some of the worst stuff I've ever seen. Not that this is a whole lot better, but we did get a moment where Roderick Strong said, hey, we're going to be teaming up with you, right? And uh, MJF grabbed the wheelchair and just threw him out of the shot, finished up his promo, went out to the ring, and then defeated Juice Robinson in what was a, a really good match. As Brian mentioned yesterday, MJF only works the main event or he works the opener so he can get the hell out of there and go home. They had a very good match. I hope they do more with Juice Robinson after this. I mean, he was willing to take a pretty big bullet for them uh, in the no pun intended with the storyline that they had planned with the whole roll of quarters and everything. I thought maybe, maybe, just maybe we could see some sort of play on that last night to AEW's credit. They didn't touch it at all. That was that. MJF gets the victory, pins Juice Robinson. He keeps the Dynamite Diamond Ring for the fifth year in a row. That brought in the entire Bullet Club to jump on MJF. They all started beating him down when Roderick Strong and, and Mike Bennett and Matt Taven rolled out to the ring. Bennett and Taven got in the ring. They immediately got knocked back out of the ring. That brought out the acclaimed and Daddy S to clear the ring. They all want to team with MJF. He is noncommittal about the whole thing. Blew everybody off as he made his way to the back up the ramp. That's when Kenny Omega came out. They shook hands. They had a moment together. They didn't need all this. All they needed was Kenny Omega to come out and say, three days uh, i'm not allowed to say it anymore i've gotten in trouble for that before but said three days and and called him a female dog that's really probably all you had to do but we we got a little bit of a promo in a moment there surely that they'll add to the video packages before their match coming up on saturday we then got a video or a, a vignette for wardlow uh talking about how he was sent into a dark place uh, all sitting at home while MJF was out there getting his shine. But now, in the same way that Wardlow lost everything, he is going to take everything away from MJF. Because they were in Philadelphia, we got a, a nice throwback ECW feel-good moment as Rob Van Dam and Hook teamed up to defeat John Silver and Alex Reynolds. Not a whole lot to say about this. Uh, RVD uh, hit a Van Daminator on Evil Uno's. He came in with a chair. Reynolds uh, was hit with a five-star frog splash. And then Hook put the red rum on Silver, forcing him to tap out. And everybody was happy about that. We then got the, our Tony Storm moment, our, our movie, Hold the Butler, which aired on Picture in Picture. And I got to be honest, I, I'm, 
I was wondering why they were doing the picture-in-picture thing, and I'm actually all for it, for what these things are, and Tony Storm and RJ City just being goofballs. They've now added Luther into the mix, but she's going to have a a, a Hollywood... Uh, her big Hollywood uh, return is going to be coming up as, as AEW goes back to Los Angeles here coming up shortly. So we may have a, a big rollout for, for Tony Storm there and a, a big moment for her, which surely she can get embarrassed on and hopefully leads to a match between her and somebody else because... Jamie Storm's hurt. She's gone. You know, um, you know, Hikaru Shida is holding up her end of the deal pretty good. Athena, they won't let in uh, AEW for whatever reason here. Like, Tony Storm's the best wrestler, women's wrestler, arguably, you have on your roster. Uh, let's get her back involved in some wrestling matches alongside this stuff, too. Tony Khan had his big surprise. Something that no pro wrestler has ever gotten before, ever. It ended up being Ric Flair, not you know, a, a, you know, a pension and uh, and benefits and life insurance and all that sort of stuff for the rest of his life. That would have been something novel you could have given a pro wrestler. No, he was gifted Ric Flair, which was the setup. I, I guess the setup just to bring out Christian Cage, Luchasaurus, and Nick Wayne to begin running down Darby Allen, Sting, and Ric Flair in the ring. We're not going to get Ric Flair in a match, are we? I mean, we already had that once, and, and that was awful in every single possible way. Uh, they were noncommittal uh, on this. It's going to be Sting and Darby Allen and a partner, uh, maybe Andrade with Ric Flair in the corner. I guess that would make some sense. They all face off against Christian Luchasaurus and Darby Allen here coming up. Christian got in some good zingers uh, on Ric Flair. Uh, I thought he was going to go in harder on the Phillies in Philadelphia for their loss the night before, but brought a use a weekend of Bernie's reference, uh, cracked on Ric Flair, you know, just obviously being there being no God, because if there was Ric Flair would have been gone 20 years ago, talked about his, his charcoal black liver. And, uh, and that was that, uh, we did have a sting exchange later on with edge as well, too, as edge was talking to Renee Paquette backstage when Darby Allen and sting confronted him over edges or i'm sorry over adam copeland's continued hopes about uh turning uh christian cage back to the good side again and reforming their team and and doing all of that uh, we'll see where it goes I, I brian talked about how this is a long-term thing to get christian and edge back together i I don't know. I, I, I don't necessarily want to see that. I don't really want to see them feuding with each other either. But, I, you know, to, to push so fast back into doing that and, and bringing up the fact that Luchasaurus and Nick Wayne, who have been brainwashed by Christian, are going to drop him at some point in the same way that the Judgment Day dropped him. I don't know, but that's kind of what they're playing off of. Chris Jericho was interviewed by Renee Paquette as well and talked, uh, gave himself a medical update, said he was pretty banged up from Powerhouse Hobbs, but he's got friends bigger than Powerhouse Hobbs, and he's going to be calling on them soon. The Elite defeated the Hardys to retain the ROH six-man titles, which led to a vignette and a film of Swerve Strickland and Prince Nana breaking into the house of Hangman Adam Page, hanging out in the crib of his child in the room of his child in the crib as as swerve cut a promo i mean uh, look aesthetically it was very well done is it too far past the pale for believing anything in pro wrestling um i guess that depends on how you look at home invasions there's been a lot of those in professional wrestling and if you like that sort of movie type of moment you definitely got it in that in that segment hikaru shida defeated ruby soho to retain the aew women's championship and in the main event brian danielson and claudio castagnoli defeated orange cassidy and kazuchika okada with brian danielson selling hard at the end and i'll tell you what i mean about when i say that when we get back from break wrestling observer live back on the show mike semper vivi here with you wrestling observer live made it stumbled through this one literally stumbling over my words the entire time on this show that's all right though clear the clear the slate tomorrow come back filthy and i back to normal a normal friday when brian isn't here as opposed to a thursday when he's not here but 
Brian Danielson, I mentioned that he was doing some heavy selling in the main event of the uh, the, the show last night. He, alongside Claudio Castagnoli, defeated Orange Cassidy. And, uh, and Kazuchika Okada, when Castagnoli got the pin on Orange after the, the big uppercut, Okada landed a shot on Brian Danielson to the face, which Danielson sold like more than Nick Wayne was selling his tooth getting knocked out was just uh, he ate the orange punch from Okada, the, the Okada punch, and he got laid out and he's holding his face and it, they really were checking on him. The doctor went over and checked on him and they made a big deal out of it. And, and Moxley and Wheeler Yuta came out and they're checking on him. And then the best friend stable came out, Rocky and Chris Statlander, Hook, and, and everybody came out there and everybody was in the ring. And it was announced that Cassidy and Castagnoli would be facing off for the international title. But Brian Danielson the entire time is just holding his face and... The crowd didn't know what was going on. It's not like everybody was brawling or anything like that. It looked like they were stalling for time until the show was going off the air because something had happened to Danielson. But all part of an angle, apparently, and Brian Danielson and Kazuchika Okada is likely going to happen at the Tokyo Dome on January 4th. Could it happen earlier than that? Possibly, but I have a feeling that's when we're next going to see that match. Hey, guys, did you love this clip? If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the join button and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show, all of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click join today and don't miss out.